everybody welcome home turn and look at your neighbor and say welcome home oh sorry is this not on turn and look at your neighbor and say welcome home thank you um, <laughs> sorry got a little sarcasm coming out right now I'll, if you'll say amen it'll help me get over that okay so I won't do it but there we go thank you uh, we're glad you're here welcome to the house of the Lord this morning if you're new or you have new information, there's a Connect card in front of you. Uh, we would love for you to fill that out front and back. We can have that information for you. That's all of my announcements for the day. We have uh, something exciting that we're going to do. We got a young lady that we're going to baptize. That's why I'm standing here. I'm, I'm, I'm not simply proving that I can't walk on water. Um, I, we're actually going to baptize her. So... The a couple months ago, uh, we introduced you to Ed Higgins, a uh, childhood friend from Russellville, and he came and joined the church, and we had I baptized him 15 years ago or something, probably, 20, yeah, uh, and he's a 
he's a cop and he was at Richmond at Academy and I was in Nicholsville and came over and we baptized him. And Ed has since moved back to Russellville and he and his sister, Mary, they've been talking for a long time and God's been talking to Mary. Today we were discussing this and she said for about the last three years, God's been dealing with me about being baptized. And one of the things that she said that really struck home with me is that she was baptized as a, as a child, as a baby. And she said, but I want my yes to Jesus to be my decision. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? And so um, just, just a few minutes ago, uh, we had a time of prayer in the office, and I spent some time with her, and she wants to get baptized, so we're going to baptize her. Come on. You can hold on there if you want, and I'll hold your hand, too. She says, by the way, she's not a young lady, but I, 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 I learned, um, I called everybody young, so I don't, I don't, I don't want to mess it stuff up. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you want to kneel there? All right, you good? All right, you are going to put your right hand on your nose okay. and your left hand on your wrist. And I'm going to hold you, I'm going to take you down like that, but I'll show you stuff. Okay. okay. So, Mary, upon the confession of your faith and obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
I love watching bapt baptisms and people give their lives and their hearts to God. I, I just love seeing that. It just makes me happy seeing the, the kingdom of God just growing. And so we're going to uh, prepare to worship in our giving this morning. Our ushers can make their way forward. And um, as they're doing that, if, if you're un if, even if you're watching online, we do have a, an online option. If you want to give online, our, our information's on the screen with Cash App and PayPal. Um, but let's just pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to give and to sow into the kingdom of God and to sow into what you're doing. God, you can do so much more with our money than we can do, God. And just giving back to you what you've already given to us, Lord. And I, I just, I know that you bless that, God. And, and you can do more with that than what we can do with it on our own. And I pray that you would bless the offering this morning, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver alike today, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord, and that opportunity today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
Satan 
touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. bless you. You can be seated. Uh, our kids are being dismissed. They're going to Sunday school. Glad all of them are here. Don't you love our kids? Don't you love our kids? Yes. Don't you love our teachers even more, right? Not even more, but especially. Yeah. Amen. Part five of our series, The Power to Change. I want to tell you this, you don't win by trying. Look at your neighbor say, you don't win by trying. Man. How many of you like to win? It's a fun one. My grandkids were so... Honey's office and their playroom is the same room. 
and then the family room upstairs, which is where my TV is, and the big, we got a sectional up there, and then Benji's room, that's the three rooms that are upstairs, and there's stairs. And so Gigi loves to come out of Honey's office and the playroom, and she loves to run around the sofa, the, the sectional, okay? She'll climb up on the, on the chair and then jump over to the sectional and run across it and across me and then down and do it. she'll do that. And then she'll also run around the whole thing on the ground. Well, the other day, this was a few weeks, a couple weeks ago, uh, Graham came out and the two of them were there and they were running and Gigi was in front until they both decided, for whatever reason, they decided to go the other direction. And now she's no longer in front, Right? And she grabbed him by the shoulder and pulled him. No, I win it. I win. And he ripped free from her and got loose, and she started crying. I don't know where she gets that, but anyway. You know, we've been told it's not Christian to win. Well, that's not that, that's, a, that's a you first mentality, and we can't have that. Let's see what the Apostle Paul said about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 24. Don't you realize, don't you know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. He just gave you permission to win. Now, he didn't give you permission to grab your brother by the shoulder and yank him backwards so you could win, but he did give you permission to win. Paul didn't say run to finish. He didn't say run for having, just to have fun. He didn't say run so you can get a participation ribbon. Sorry, that one always does, Chapman. He said run to win. Now, the great theologian, Ricky Bobby, said, if you ain't first, you're last. He did. That's what he said. Right there. So run. Come on, guys. We got to fun a little bit, right? Run to win. Why is it that in so many areas of our lives we feel like we're not winning? If Paul said we're supposed to win, why don't we feel like we're winning? Maybe it feels like we're not winning in our spirituality. What about in our financially? Do you feel like you're winning? What about in your relationships? What if it feels like, what, if, if, you're, if you're not overcoming temptation? What about if you're not overcoming a mindset maybe of worry? Anybody worry too much? What about a mindset of anger? Anybody got some anger that, they, that just rears its head at all the perfect little times? We're supposed to run to win our race. So why aren't we winning? I propose to you that we have been, you've been trying too long. You've simply been trying too long. We've created quite a theology out of trying. I'm going to try to start praying. I'm trying to be more patient with my kids. I'm trying to stop procrastinating. I'm trying to eat better. I'm trying to go to bed at a decent time. Trying to start exercising. Trying to get better with my money. It's okay. You ain't got to say it, man. It's all right. I caught it. I felt it. I felt it. We've been trying too long, and it's a, it's a powerful, we've got to change our perspective in this powerful way, and it's straight from God's Word. So we've got to change how we think about 
this, and it's all throughout Scripture. But before we do that, I want to review just quickly our first four lessons on this series. First thing was real and lasting change isn't behavior modification. It is what? It's spiritual transformation. Right? It's our identity. Why do we do what we do? Secondly, you do what you do because of who you think you are. You do what you do because of who you think you are. You act exactly who you think you are. We got to identify our spiritual who. We've got to identify our spiritual why. We've got to identify our spiritual what. And with those habits, based on who you want to become, what one habit do you need to start? Remember we did that one a couple weeks ago. What's your one habit that you need to start? And then the spiritual what not is based on who you want to become, what one habit do you need to break? Which was last week, our spiritual how. So it's a change in mindset. Mindset. We, why aren't you winning? You've been trying too long. It's time to stop trying and start training. It's time to start, stop trying and start training. I want to show you in Scripture. When Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he used this competitive metaphor that you're to run to win. Corinth is a city, most of you know this, was a city in Greece. Every four years, Greece hosted what? Anybody? Just anybody tracking with that little bit of information? The Olympic Games. So, but every two years, they had a local competition, which was the Isthmian Games. Okay? They had chariot races. They had, they boxed. They wrestled. They had poetry. That's right. It fit right in there, right? Just smooth, just came right, rolled right off the tongue. Chariot races, boxing, wrestling, poetry. Not sure if it was slam poetry. Not sure. Then so we're going to keep reading. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it is. Athletes discipline themselves to train. In the Olympic Games, they did, they, they, they entered into a 10-month intense training regimen. Now you gotta roll with me. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna say something here in just a minute of all the things that they did, and I'm just gonna keep on going, but you're gonna hiccup. They had a very strict diet, they had no wine. They ate no drunk food. The runners, when they would run, they would run nude because of the purity of their body. There would be no restrictions. They, would be, they, they had this motivation in them. They would wrestle in the heat of the day. They would even wrestle, if they could, they would go find snow and they would wrestle in it. They even wrestled bulls. They wrestled horses. And some of them even wrestled lions. I'm pretty sure I would have chosen poetry. But the scripture never says try. Do you know that? 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Don't try to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. Oh. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. That's a good word. Dallas Willard said this, we are not trying to be different people, but we are training to be different people. The, what is the difference between trying and training? 
You see, in trying, trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. What would you do? Better yet, what would your spouse do if you told them, baby, I'm so sorry. I'm going to try to not have any more affairs. How would that go over? It would go over like a skillet upside the head. No, not like a skillet upside the head. It would be a skillet upside the head. It would really go over that way, Right? But yet in the kingdom of God, we do so many things and we hide behind trying, understanding, not understanding, but now realizing that it is actually an attempt to change with minimal commitment. Often a half-hearted attempt, which actually gives us permission to fail, because we're trying. Well, I tried. It gives us a way out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to read my Bible. <laughs> Didn't do it again. I'm going to try to be nice. Jerk. I'm going to try not to eat the whole thing. You see, trying is an attempt to change with minimal commitment, but training is a wholehearted commitment to achieve a specific result. Now we know the difference. When you're trying, you just show up and you just hope there's something to happen. First time I ever met Zach was in the gym. And we weren't trying. We were training. You see, when you're training, first thing, when you're training, you get the gear. Anybody ever decided you wanted to jog, you wanted to you know, you want to run some in your life throughout, throughout some there? Yeah, okay, cool. Here's what happened. If you were trying, you didn't do this. But if you were training, you went and got shoes. You got socks. You got the right shorts. You got a watch. You got the hat and a water bottle and maybe even some goo to go in a fanny pack. Oh, yeah, you had to get a fanny pack too. If you're going to get organized, then, then you're going to get a planner and markers and pens and stickers and binders and inserts. Y'all ought, ought to come to our pantry. You open our pantry, and it, 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 there is not a, is that a cylinder? It's a bottle of oatmeal? What is that, a container of oatmeal, an urn of oatmeal? I don't know what, but ours doesn't, no, that's not in our cabinet. Our cabinet has a plastic square with a top on it, and it has a sticker on the side that has been printed from a computer that says oatmeal. Because the picture of the Quaker ain't enough. No one knew what it was if it was a picture of a Quaker. We had to actually print one. Actually, there's four things up top that say cereal. Four different containers that say cereal. There's one next to the oatmeal that says stevia. Underneath there, there's one that says flour, sugar, powdered sugar, brown sugar, cornmeal, Jelly beans, just kidding. <laughs> and now you know another reason why I love her. You got to get the gear. If you're training, you got to get the gear. Secondly, you got to create a game plan. You understand that Rocky didn't just show up to fight Balboa, uh, uh, Apollo, sorry, he is Balboa. He didn't just fight, show up to fight Apollo and all of a sudden somebody pulled a jam box out and started playing Eye of the Tiger and he just whooped his tail. And that is not the way it happened. He had to run the stairs and get to the top, right? And we have a movie that they created a statue, a city created a statue about. Because it was the heart of that, they, were, they, they, uh, they took that on and identified that as the heart of their city. You got to create a game plan. You got to go get the book. You got to go watch YouTubes. You got to get an app about it. You got to get a gym membership or a mentor or a trainer and you pick a time. 
you've ever been to the gym with me, you've seen this. Every day I go to the gym, except one, the day that I'm not doing legs heavy, this bag goes into the gym with me. These are straps. I put them around my wrist, and then I wrap the bar, and I hold that like this because it's for back exercises when I'm pulling because my grip, this muscle, is going to fail before this muscle. This is a big muscle. This is a little muscle. So I just hold the grip, and then I pull with my back, okay? So that I'm, I'm putting the, the stress more on my back. This is my gloves, and it's actually got straps that go around my wrist here because my wrists are puny, and they, my body can push more weight than my wrist can, so I got to have a little bit of extra support right there on my wrist. And the gloves are so my hands aren't too terribly calloused from being in the gym. And in case my first two rat straps aren't enough, I got two more of them. Because, I mean, what's better than one set of straps. I don't even know what these are. What are these? Oh, and these were when I was using hooks instead of straps. I just hooked them on, hooked them onto the bar and pulled. That way I didn't have to use my, uh, didn't have to use my forearm and blow out my grip strength and prove how little I had. And here's a fun one, a weight belt for when I go heavy. I don't use it much. I've learned to, I, I have, a, I have a, a principle in, this, in the gym of stimulate, not annihilate. I want to stimulate my muscles. I don't want to annihilate my muscles. I'm, I'm past that. I just want to be able to walk tomorrow. Fair enough. Some people don't. They don't care. Um, oh, here's a fun one. I like this one. Uh, God bless America. These are my uh, these are my knee wraps. They're actually straps uh, that I wrap around my knees when I'm going heavy so there's extra support there. Uh, this one's the same one, if you believe me. And so it's so it can extra, give me some extra support when I'm, when I'm training my knees, training my legs, because I don't want to train my knees. I want to train my legs. I don't want to blow my knees out. I want to be able to walk tomorrow. And oh, there's more hooks and you never know when you're going to need baby wipes. I mean, you... you've never trained until you needed baby wipes? You see, when you, you got to get a plan and you got to get the gear, because I'm training, I'm not just trying. Fun fact, we got a picture, Nate, babe. I was, this was 10, 12 years ago. Nate to Tracy, friend of mine. Um, at the time that I met him, he was the he was. There's only there's less than 200 professional bodybuilders, professional bodybuilders in the world. Less than 200 professionals. Okay, that's fewer than NBA players. Fewer than you know. So he was one of them. And he's since retired, but he still. This is a picture that's in the last couple months, and he's still massive. He's still a beast, obviously. And he gave me a lot of my food, my diet plans, and even a lot of my workout regimens early. And I'd use that until, and, and Nate's so busy. He's a social media guy, and he has such a, he's a network marketing guy, and he has thousands of people that, that talk to him all the time, and he is so busy. And it got to the point that I could not get over the hump at a certain point. And so I was talking to my brother, I was talking to Nate, and I just couldn't get over the hump. And so I actually went on to Jason Theobald and actually paid him, got a picture of Jason, babe, um, I actually paid Jason to give me um, diet plans and, and, and workout plans, training plans and stuff, and uh, Jason also is a retired pro now, and, and the difference is, is I was, this was, this was a few years ago, I was actually paying Jason $180 a month to tell me what to eat, not what to eat, how much to eat. And then I would take, uh, I would take his, 
I would take the macros that I'm supposed to have and send it back to him. And he, let's just say uh, he had said I was supposed to have 2,500 calories each day. And so I sent him back, and it was 2,503. He actually replied to me, come on, Ben, dial it in. Oh. Huh. <laughs> oh, clearly, I'm an idiot. Okay. I actually sent him a text, too. I was going on vacation. I said, hey, bro, going on vacation with the fam. Going to be there seven days. Just wonder if I can get a few more calories. He goes, when are you going to learn that life is not about food, and why can't you enjoy life without having to binge and become a fat softy like you used to be? I lost four pounds on vacation that week. I was mad about it, but he motivated me because I wasn't just trying. I was training. You see, we're not just trying, we're training. If we want to get close to God, it's not just about us trying to get close to God. We're training, according to Timothy, we're training for godliness. If you're not closer to God than today than you were a year ago, you're not doing it right. If we're not getting closer to God, then we're doing something incorrectly. Is that fair? So stop trying and start training. You got to get the right gear. Maybe you need to download the Bi Open Bible app, the YouVersion Bible app on your phone. So you got it with you everywhere you go. Maybe you need to set an alarm to read your Bible. And you can set an alarm on your phone to read your Bible on your phone. It's usually stuck to your ear. Maybe you need an app about prayer. Maybe you need to go find you an app that reminds you to pray. Maybe you set an alarm to pray. Maybe you need to uh, begin to start working through some of the, maybe you need to start journaling some stuff. Buy you a journal. Buy you a special pen. And the only time you use that pen is when you're journaling. Maybe you need to download a worship play playlist. And I don't care if it's, if it's from someone playing or singing hymns to quartet music to, to uh, gospel choirs to praise and worship. I, I don't care what it is. But you need to find something. Maybe you need to find something to put on your phone that you can put in worship music while you're going down the road. Because we're not trying, we're training. When you're trying, you give up if it's too hard or you don't feel like it or it's cold in the morning or you enjoy sleeping in. First of all, let me, let me just, God bless all of you that get up early and work out. I am never doing that. Therefore, I never fail at it. I am setting myself up for failure if I get up, if I say I'm going to get up at 5 o'clock and go train. Because it ain't happening. Because you see, when we're training, we don't act according to our feelings. We act according to our commitment. When you're an athlete or a competitor or a disciple of Jesus, fighting against something that matters. We're fighting against something that matters. We've got a vision. We've got a goal. We've got dreams. We've got an assignment. We're not just trying. You see, trying apart from training would be unthinkable if we get the right process in our mind. So 1 Corinthians 9, in 26 and 27, Paul said, I want to read again to you, so I run with purpose in every step. That was one of the things that Jason said to me, not just personally to me, but in our group, that when he works out, his first rep is as effective as his last rep in a set. The first curl he does is just as perfect as the last curl he does, and it works the muscle the same. 
Now, the muscle is more fatigued at the end, obviously, but he's not just trying to get to the point of getting tired and then doing one more rep. Every rep is perfect. Every rep is squeezing the right muscle. Too many people bench and they don't even activate their chest. Well, benching is for your chest, mostly, and you're benching without even activating your chest. One, it took me five years to figure out how to squeeze my chest when I was pressing. I've got to make every move have purpose. Paul said, when I run, every step I have is on purpose. You see, the problem is too often, one of our problems is too often Mondays don't count. We just trying to get back in the swing of stuff at work, and we got all this going on, and we got this. And we just we checked out for the weekend, and we and then Tuesdays we're doing man, man. It's, well, Wednesday's here, and we're we're back at church, and well, what happened to the first part of the week? No, on Monday we've got to be training for godliness. <laughs> I'm not just shadow boxing, I discipline my body like an athlete training to do what it should. You got the gear, you got the plan. Discipline my body like an athlete, it's because it's our identity. We are Christians. We are perf- we're doing things on purpose because we're Christians. And so we've disciplined our bodies. We've disciplined ourselves. Let me, let me just say this. Discipline isn't just abstinence. Do you know, some, some of y'all, have, some of y'all think I've, I talk about training or eating or whatever, especially the last couple of weeks, too much. Do you know that skinny doesn't mean you're healthy? I'm, I'm trying to help some of us that aren't quite as skinny as others. Skinny doesn't mean you're healthy. You can actually be sick. You can not be fit, but be skinny. So I actually, I went to camp one, I'm going to tell you in a second, I'll go to, um, um, those of you who don't know, I'm a referee, but I, I, I go to camp every summer, I went a couple weeks ago, and that means I pay people to tell me how bad I am at referee. I pay them to critique me. And so, uh, first, one of the first camps I went to, uh, this guy was there. He was the SEC assi- signer for the SEC. He had just gotten fired uh, a week or two ago. And he walks up and he goes, all you that are fat, thank you for coming. I appreciate your money. We ain't looking at you to referee for us. You can't say that in this politically incorrect world. He goes, oh, I can say that. I don't have a job. None of these other guys can say it because they all got jobs. They'd get fired. I don't have a job. I can say it. And Jake is... 6'1", he's 70 years old, cowboy boots, belt buckle about that big, and about 160 pounds. And he said, well, he's actually a doctor, uh, uh, he's an educator, and he said, well, Dr. Bell, how skinny do you want to be? How do you know if you're skinny enough? This is just funny to me, I'm going to tell you this, I'll tell tell a short version. He said, how do you know if you're skinny enough? He said, well, somebody looks at you and they say, have you lost weight? That ain't it. If somebody looks at you, now this is just for refereeing. He's not even talking about being healthy. He's talking about being skinny. And he said, he, said, he goes, I don't even care if you, wear, if you work out your legs as long as you run. He said, because you got pants on, nobody can see them. He said, I want to know what your shoulders look like, your arms look like, and make a, ne- and a skinny waist. Because that's, that's what we can see. So he said, what about uh, if somebody looks at you and says, man. You look good. That ain't it. He said, when someone looks at you and says, have you been sick? That's when you're skinny enough to be a referee. Whatever. You see, it's not just enough to try. We got to train. You see, when I'm trying, I'm hoped to become something I'm not. But when I'm training, I'm getting better at what I already am. Because we talked about identity at the very beginning. And we're wanting to strengthen our identity in Christ. We're not trying, we're training. It's not, I'm not going to, I'm not trying. You're not going to try your way into a better marriage. 
The only way you're going to have a great marriage is to be in training. Somebody else say amen right there. <coughs> you're not going to try to be a better parent and get there. The only way you're going to be a godly parent is to be in training. Somebody ought to say amen right there. We're not going to just try to become more popular. The only way we're going to do this is training to please Christ, Jesus and please God is to live a life of righteousness. And the only way it's going to happen is through training. You aren't trying, you're training to become who God says you are. Based on who you want to become, how are you going to train? You might want to take a picture of that. Based on who you want to become, how are you going to train? I'm asking you to be real. This is your stuff. This is, this is you. How, what do you need to do to be more like Jesus, to fulfill your destiny, to fulfill your identity, to fulfill your calling in your life? Everybody has it. We've got the gear. We've got the plan. We're not trying. We're training. Let me tell you this. This is a neat little story. Are you coming up? Uh, there's, in jiu-jitsu, there's a few belts, and I won't get them all, but I think this is, the, this is right in order. I might have missed one or two, but this is the order. There's a white belt, there's a blue belt, there's a purple belt, there's a brown belt, and then the top belt is the black belt, okay? And then they even get levels of black belt, and there's three and six and eight, nine, and ten, you know, uh, level of, uh, of black belt. And Hoist Gracie is like tenth or twelfth level black belt. He was the first one to ever win UFC. Do you know the hardest belt to get? Somebody. White, black, somebody said white. White's the hardest one to get. How many in the room have a white belt? No, because we never started. And here's a fun one. You'll like this. They said that a Black belt is simply a white belt who never stopped training. That's good. So again, I'm going to tell you this real quickly. This is my close here. I told you I officiate several sports. Basketball is my favorite. I do. I go to camp. I pay people to tell me what I need to get better at. I teach officiating. I've got one guy I've taken under my wing. We're doing some games here in the next few weeks. Together and just to get him on the court. He's he's 54 years old, 53 years old, just retired from teaching. He wants to be in the basketball. He was a coach. He wants to referee now. And he's so we're I'm putting him on the court. I'm working with him. He's asking, what you see there? What I, I love to teach. I take it very seriously. At the camp I just went to I had three people that had never done one of them had done like five high school games and no one had ever done college, and the rest of them had done anything. And I that was my crew that I had. Two years ago I had on my crew was a, a, a Vietnamese girl who was 16 years old and in her height the beginning number in her height was a 4 and my assigner told me he said you know why I put Jenna with you don't you Ben I said yes he said I'm not sure anybody else would take care of her but I know you will I said we good boss I got you my goal is to referee at the boys state sweet, sweet 16 tournament this year, I got assigned my first regional final, which is one step away from state tournament. Finals, state tournament. I also got assigned my first postseason college basketball game. So a week ago Friday, when I typed this, it was last Friday, but a week ago Friday, I was talking to my assigner, my college assigner. I said, what are you doing, Jerry? He said, oh, I'm in the gym. I'm working out. I'm trying to get that body by being. We both just started laughing. You see, I compete against 25-year-olds. I don't have a choice. I'm not going to get games if I show up 50 pounds overweight because they're going to pick the 25-year-old whose metabolism still works. Zach, stand up. Stand up. Zach, 
this kid a couple years from now is going to be officiating with us, okay? And he's going, he's a senior now. He's going to KWC to play football, but uh, in, in next, next fall as a freshman. But he, he, he runs 200s and 400s and 800s, never even ran one of them the other day, and he, ran, he won the race. Never even run it before. Never ran the race, and he won the race in a meet. And, it, and that's who I got to fight against five years from now in, in, in officiating. I got to race against him. I got I to I'm So I don't have a choice of showing up overweight. I have to be in the best possible shape I could be in. So you know what? Monday this past week, I was in the gym. I wasn't trying. I was training. Tuesday, guess where I was? I was in the gym. You might see a pattern here. Wednesday, guess where I was? Thursday, guess where? Friday, guess Because I'm training. Because you see, I'm going to win. And winning is not when I referee the regional tournament or winning is not when I referee the state tournament. Winning is when I show up. Because last Sunday we had service, we had a great Mother's Day service, and Monday I was spending time with the Lord talking to him about this Sunday, because I wasn't just trying, I was training. And Tuesday, I spent several hours in the office at a computer trying to talk to the Lord about what he had talked to me about the day before, so I could type it out. So I could preach it today, but also so I could send it to our team so they could put all the slides together and do all that stuff. And Wednesday, I was in the office talking with Jesus, working through things. Because I'm not just trying. We're not just trying. We're training. Winning isn't showing up on Easter and having 150 people. Winning is showing up on Monday. think you understand this, but the very first time she ever sat down to a keyboard to a piano, probably, it did not come out like this. The very first time Derek grabbed a guitar, first of all, he had to set drumsticks down, because that was his first, first instrument. His family was very glad that he set the drumsticks down. And then got a guitar that he could actually put headphones on. <laughs> it didn't sound like it sounded today. But he couldn't just, she couldn't just try to be a keyboard player. Couldn't just try to be a guitar player. She had to go into training. Spending time. Spending time. Spending time. You see, you're, we aren't successful when we're not just winning when we're successful and we hit some goal in the future. We're successful when we show up every day and we train and we honor God. When we show up, we train and we honor God today. That's when we're successful. Because the journey of a thousand miles begins with the same thing. Every person that's gone a thousand miles started it the exact same way. Oh, mile 20 might have hurt one more than it hurt another. Mile 100, mile 50, mile 70, whatever. But they all started the exact same way. One step. Let's stand. We're not just trying, folks, we're training.
place to hide there. This is glass. So. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm not trying anymore. I'm training now. Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? But if you would just be so honest, transparent with yourself and with me right now, and you'd say, you know what, Ben, I've spent a lot of time trying, used a lot of excuses, trying. I need to do better than that. I need to be trained. Would you just lift your hand up? Amen. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. All over the room. Thank you. Yep. Good. Amen. If it's not enough. pray for you right now. Father, thank you for everyone in the house. Thank you for those that are watching online. Thank you for the hands that were raised just now, saying they realize it's not enough to just be trying. But we've got to take that next step. We've got to start training every single day. Lord, whatever those steps are for each one, I pray that you would just show them to us. I pray you'd show them to us individually. Let us know exactly what to do next, exactly what we need to do, what we do, do not do. We're not trying to gain acceptance. We're not doing any of that. We know grace is the only way we get that. But we also know that you gave some one talent, you gave some two talents, and you gave some five. And you came back and asked what they had done with their talents. That's all we're doing, God. We want to train our talents. We want to train the things you've given us we could give you back more than you gave us. Asking for your help in doing that right now. Amen. If you'd like prayer, I'd love for you to come down front. I'd love to pray with you. We're going to sing a song. Also, Mary, I want you to come down if you would, please. We're going we're to come around and greet her. Uh, but if you'd like prayer, I'd love to pray with you. If ever singing, let's sing a song. Thank you. Just give him praise this time. All hail King Jesus. He deserves our praise. Let me share two then things of praise with you real quick. This past week I had a uh, rocky road, sort of a pun intended, since I had uh, these that I, uh, kidney stones and had to have a procedure. I wasn't expecting 
Tuesday. So I appreciate the prayers and the visits, and those things as well. I appreciate that very much. The other thing, and this is just important to me, maybe, but I want to thank you for your love and your encouragement for walking with me. Two years ago, it's actually today, I walked in that door for the first time, and we have been walking this together, and I just appreciate you so, so much. Thank you for this. Amen. Lastly, hon, we are happy to then have you with us. We, we can celebrate with you today. And hey, one of the things we always share with folks is these two words, welcome home. And let's just pray real quick and then we're going to celebrate Pastor. Yes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. And we do say hail King Jesus. Our victory is in you, Lord. The race that we run is for you, Lord. That we may edify you and glorify you and lift up the name of Jesus. Because your word says, if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. That's our purpose. That's our calling. Father, as we leave this place, put lost people, hurting people, searching people in our path, God. That we would lift you up into their lives. And they would want you in their lives. We thank you that you love us. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said real loud. Amen. No, 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 no. Real, real loud. There you go. You're in